today's video, we're playing around with magnetic putty to see what happens if we take it to temperature extremes. Guys, we've got an awesome new shirt available. Click the link in the description to get yours now. Callie, I want to add on some more. Do you know if we have any more knives or swords around? You know nothing, Nate Snow. Nate, you went shopping again. We've got a lot of magnetic putty now. It comes in a lot of different colors, and we got several of each color. We've made magnetic putty before, we've made our own sort of ferrofluid before, we've used commercially made ferrofluid. Now we want to try using commercially made magnetic putty, and I do like the colors, and I want to try some things with it that I haven't seen anyone else do. I think that's going to be awesome. Now, I've seen magnetic putty all over YouTube, but I have never seen it in this many types of colors. This is awesome. If you guys have never seen magnetic putty before, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take a magnet, you take this putty that has some, uh, I believe it's iron dust in it. So magnetic putty is just known for the fact that, you know, you get this putty, it comes with a magnet, and it just reacts to it. It's the coolest stuff ever. The important thing is that when you put the magnet in, it just like swallows the magnet over time. How fast it goes depends on how the magnet's oriented, how thick or viscous the putty is, is and how long you leave it in there. It comes with some smaller magnets as well, and those ones are little enough that they'll usually just get completely covered in just a matter of seconds. Let's see, what are some things that you've never seen someone do with magnetic putty that you think we should see with magnetic putty? You know what I'm gonna say. You wanna light it on fire. I really do. Of course you do. I think we should try heating it up in a few different ways. You often prefer a blowtorch, Maybe some slightly lower temperature heat as well would be good to try. Does it melt? Does it get to a lower viscosity? I don't know. We've melted some slime before and that did, uh, at least the homemade slime, it did just kind of liquefy. So it'd be really it interesting to cool. see if the same thing happens with this. It was interesting because it melted, but then it didn't boil. It didn't even really, it sort of simmered on the top, but it doesn't, you don't get the bloop, bloop, bloop effect that you think you're gonna get. It just liquefies. So can we liquefy this a little bit more? And if we do, will the iron powder stay mixed into it? Or will it sort of, sink? yeah, come out? Can we make like a really runny magnetic liquid or will it just burn? I think we should also try heating up a magnet and putting that into the putty. Interesting. Yeah, let's try that too. Here's the basic idea. We have a lot of magnetic putty, even some in some new unique colors. We're going to see what happens when we heat it up, freeze it, and if there are a few new ways to play with it. We've got some of our magnetic putty spread out and now we're going to see what it does with our giant magnet. It is reacting a little bit. The surface texture is getting a little wrinkled and bubbly and it's reaching toward the magnet a bit. I'm just going to set it down and see what it does. Much slower, calmer reaction than when there's a big blob of it, clearly. It is still getting drawn in, it's getting pulled over to it, but I think there's just not enough of the magnetic putty within range of the magnetic field to really get pulled onto it, and so it's not enveloping it the way it did before. It sticks a little bit, makes a nice bubble. Ha, <laughs> that was cool. There's about what happens when we flatten out some magnetic putty and play with the magnet on it. It doesn't have the same mass, so it doesn't get drawn onto the magnet in the same way. It does react a little bit interestingly in some points. I really liked the look of the when it was a film stretched out that was still getting pulled toward the magnet. That was kind of neat, but it's probably more fun to just have it in a blob. Callie, I think you've uh, got a blowtorch ready. I do. Should we start with the blowtorch or should we start with the stovetop? You know what, why don't we have the stovetop going? Because I think that's going to take quite a bit of time. So let's get the stovetop going. Let's try it with some liquid nitrogen and let's try it with the torch. All right. We'll just start with one of these little caps. Now, while the low, slow heat is going, I think you had an idea for a higher, faster heat. Should I just turn the blowtorch onto the workbench? I'll yeah. put it right there. Yeah, I like that plan. There we go. We'll put it up here. Bubbling. Cool. It looks burnt. It's sparkling. That's cool. <laughs> so the whole thing just like expanded and then collapsed. It, it looks like we've made lava. This looks like a magma flow here. This is so cool. It really looked like a lava flow. That was the coolest. All right, we'll play with that in a minute. Let's talk about this while this cools down. So this is set on pretty much the lowest setting, <laughs> and it hasn't been on there long, but it's definitely 
turned to a very different consistency. This is runny now, uh, and it was not runny before. So we have successfully melted it. Awesome. And of course the question is, is it still attracted to a magnet while it's runny and liquid like this? So let's not just set one in because then it might pull really hot liquid up onto our hand. Don't worry about it. Ow, gosh. <laughs> you all right? I'm great. There's magnets everywhere. <laughs> Let's see if it's still attracted to a magnet. Oh, well. Oh, the pan is. The pan is very attractive. Well, actually, I think it's the stove below the pan. <laughs> it's the stove below the pan that's attracted to the magnet. But this is pretty interesting right there. So that's so cool. It's definitely still attracted to it. That magnet really likes the stove, though. Look at this. <laughs> Strong enough to just lift the whole stove up off the counter. Oh, interesting. Now it's running off, though. Some got attracted, but then like you're, it's dripping off of the magnet. You're keeping the iron, but you're leaving the slime. That's probably what it's doing. It's pulling the iron right out because it's so much thinner now. I'm mean, just going to drop another one of these little magnets in, see what it does. I think I have pulled a lot of the iron out of that part of the slime, and so now it's not as attractive as it was before. Oh, look at this, yep. So it's now cooled off a fair bit because the magnet was fairly cool, but you can see that it's sort of like the slime is becoming detached from the iron that's inside it. So it's, it's not completely separated, but it's partially separated. This stuff on my hands is just not as attracted to the magnet anymore. So you definitely can melt the slime you can separate it. and it will still be pulled onto a magnet, but then the heat makes the slime so much less viscous that the metal powder gets pulled out pretty easily. So this was all on the magnet and it had separated out and I can feel there's little dense spots. It's kind of like when it was just in the packaging for a long time, it starts separating it, but just mixing it up. Um, right now it's just slightly warm. It doesn't feel hot at all anymore. I wouldn't have any concerns with this on my bare skin. Just a little bit warm is all. But, so at this point, I've just mixed it back together, and I bet at this point it's gonna go right back. To, yep, all very attracted to the magnet again. That was bizarre. It's coming up in pieces. So we've changed the texture by cooking it as well. I don't really think there's any water in this, but something is getting boiled off and there might be some solvent in it or something. And that could have just all been removed at this point. And you can see that what's left is, you know, even though it's warm, it, it's not really a liquid anymore. It's stuck down onto the pan. So let's just let this cool off entirely and then investigate it a little bit more. All right, so the last silly putty that we tried burned a little too fast with the torch. Shocker. So we're gonna try again. looks like lava. I'm still thrilled. Green, oozy, slimy lava. Oh, it smells awful. My gosh. But yeah, we boiled it. And you could tell like, I think the, the red hot spots were where you could see like kind of the iron dust. It's... Oh! What? And all the liquid stuff. Okay, so there is still some liquid and it still will react, but we definitely have the same skin that we saw in the uh, boiled stuff on the stove. So I'll just take a look at that. A yeah. little bit of the flakes. Yeah, that's cool. Which is kind of what I was going for. I was seeing if like the flakes still have the iron powder and if those are still drawn to the magnet. I think maybe less, but still some. This is now cooled down. It's sitting on our stove again, but our stove is off, so it's, you know not really doing much. So this is just very slightly warm at this point and uh, our, our pan is a decent non-stick surface. And so this is all just peeling off. This is definitely not putty anymore. It's a little bit thicker in this spot. That's kind of putty, but the rest of this is more of just a skin, uh, not liquid. It's kind of like a plastic sheet. It just kind of crumples up on it. It actually still moves fairly similarly to when it was liquid, like the way it sort of envelops the magnet all around it. it just pulls itself on, but we can pull it back off and anywhere that's dried out completely from the heat. It just undoes. It's almost a magnetic cloth at this point. 
This is our thermos full of liquid nitrogen, and we've just had a magnet chilling on top of it for a while here. Let's freeze some of this stuff. Okay, what's your plan with the frozen magnet? You've just had it sitting here. That is very cool. I actually just did that because I thought it looked like it would fit nicely, and we might get sort of liquid nitrogen eeping out the sides like that. We don't actually want a good seal on this <laughs> because liquid nitrogen is just going to build up way too much pressure for that to be safe. So the ball, the little magnet, would easily move out of the way. Okay, I want to know if we can freeze putty around just a frozen ball and it'll break off. Okay. So that's going to sit here. And then let's pour some liquid nitrogen into this container. Yep. Now let's take our purple putty. All right, here goes into the liquid nitrogen. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Bring it in and just vapor all around it. That's cool. Well, nope, didn't get nearly as cold as I thought. This is still malleable. The magnet is still like an ice cube. It wasn't in liquid nitrogen, no, it, it was wasn't. just above the vaporous nitrogen. And this isn't a very strong magnet either. That's this, true. Is a, this is a very weak toy magnet, so not much. I think we can pull this out now. This is uh, <laughs> nice and solid. That's a brick. All right, still attracted to the magnet. Yes, fairly yeah. weak attraction, but is attracted to it, definitely. Ha! Just gonna roll this into the mess. How many can you catch? Okay, now it's no longer rock. Now it's weird because the inside's frozen, but the outside's just like squishing. Mine's starting to look kind of like a piece of chewed bubble gum. Gross. But glittery? Glitter gum. So this is kind of weird. Now the very outside is melted. Mm -hmm. So it's just got like this rubbery skin. Yup, mine's doing that too. You can like peel it off of your little chunk. But it seems to just be returning to normal. So I don't think freezing it causes any permanent damage to our slime. It just freezes for a bit and then it thaws and oh. back to normal. We're gonna try and superheat one of our magnets now, drop it into the putty and see if it makes any difference. Now, when you superheat a magnet, if we get it hot enough, it will lose its magnetic attraction. I don't think we're gonna get it that hot, but let's see. I don't think we're going to be able to drop a magnet that's still magnetic, because if it's still magnetic, then it's not gonna come off of our chisel. So we might just lower it down in if it doesn't wanna come off of the chisel. It seems to me that if it's still attached to the chisel, then it will attract the putty. If it comes off of the chisel, then it also won't attract the putty. But let's find out. Oh, is that magnet broken? Oh. Well, it lost its magnetic attraction right there. Interesting. That happened quickly. Let's try it with another one. I think that magnet had a chip in it, which might have, I think that's what was causing the sparking. Look, it's not enveloping it, so it did lose its magnetic that's attraction That's true. The, the putty's not really moving toward the magnet at all. It just sunk like anything would. Compared to a cool magnet. Yep, completely getting eaten. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, it still hasn't regained its magnetism, so see if it'll happen again. That happened way faster than I thought I it would. I know. They're not very strong magnets to begin with, but... Mm. Woo! Come on. You can hear it sizzling and popping, but sure enough, it's just sinking. So this is a cool magnet. That's what it should do. This is a magnet that's lost its magnetic attraction. It's just sitting in the putty. It's not being absorbed. I looked it up and it looks like the Curie temperature, the point at which neodymium magnets lose their magnetism, is around 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. I am amazed at how quickly they got to that temperature, but they are fairly small. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of mass to them, so... Two magnets down. All right, so the next thing that we want to try is we actually want to race our magnetic putty. So we're going to take all of the different colors, we're going to put them on our white surface, and we're going to put a magnet right in the middle. We're going to see which one reaches it first. We've got our magnets all set up. We've got our putty all set up. We have added some googly eyes, you know, just to make it better. Uh, Josh, our camera guy today, has decided they look like judgy amoebas. I agree. Set, set, and go. Oh, green wins. The green was way more liquidy than the others it for really some reason, was. but. Come on, I'm gonna help the ones that aren't as liquidy because I feel like they're just not gonna join in the fun if I don't. I think you're right. We've still got quite a bit of our magnetic putty and we're gonna try and just take all of it and blob it together and then just have some fun dropping magnets down into it because it's so fun to watch the magnets get absorbed by the putty and even better in multicolor. That was cool, it spun around. 
Super magnet. I love this side. This side right here, that's our, that's cool, the colors. Stuck to my face a bit, but look at that bubble. Guys, that's all for today. If you've got more things you'd like to see us try with a load of magnetic putty, let us know down in the comments. Click that box at the top to go check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.